Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you a tour of our gazebo right here and the area surrounding it and just chat with you about what our plans are for the gazebo itself and some future visions for this spot because I recently posted a picture of the view of the front of the gazebo and I said something to the effect of this view is going to change significantly this year for the better and I usually don't like to tease projects <laughs> until we have some activity happening but I do believe that we're gonna be starting in here pretty quick and I thought it would be fun to share with you guys what's going on. So let's start with a little bit of a backstory on the gazebo. We are the fourth owners of this house and it was put in or built by the second owners of the house. I wanna say somewhere in the range of 25 to 35 years ago, I have no idea exactly how old it is, but it was built as the backdrop of one of their daughter's weddings. And I've kind of shared with you guys through the years that we've been here, that I feel like the design aesthetic of this gazebo isn't really in keeping with the design aesthetic of our house or the other outbuildings that we have. And I've always known that at some point I would want to either paint it or renovate it or put something different here. And it is a really great structure, like it is sound. There's nothing wrong with it. Although I feel like, and I don't know about you guys, but my opinion is, is that the roof is a little bit top heavy. I feel like the size of the beams, which could be easily fixed, are too skinny for the, the weight of the top of it. And it does have a very, like a rustic charm about it. Um, and I do appreciate the fact that it was here just because it gives me a sense of the flow of our property just to know what it feels like to have a structure in this space, as opposed to thinking about maybe putting a structure somewhere else. I know that I like the proximity to our kitchen. Like if we're using this to entertain, I like the proximity to our barn where our, all of our garden supplies are. Um, so that's been really helpful. Speaking of entertaining though, I could probably count on both my hands how many times we've actually used this space in the four and a half years. It'll be five years this May that we have been in this home. Um, when we moved in, we thought initially this is going to be prime for filming, like perfect, because it's shaded most all the time. But what happens is you get underneath here, and because of the, the uh, I don't know, the weight of the roof and the amount of shade, the deep shade that it casts, most of the time it is dark in here and really bright all the way around it because the sun is usually shining on three sides of it which makes it incredibly difficult to film because it makes everything look blown out and makes everything in here look too dark. So we never really utilized it that way. And the other thing that I didn't even think about when we first moved in here is because it's completely open all the way around and we live in a, such an incredibly windy area that's really dirty, like we've got fields all around us. I mean, it's an agricultural community. So when we have a windstorm, which we usually have a really strong one at least once a week during the spring and summer months, I mean, there's just dust flying everywhere and it's always dirty in here. And so I see comments from you guys like, oh, it'd be so nice just to grab your dinner and come out here and eat or bring a book out and read. I mean, it's not as simple as that because in order to do that every single time you have to stop what you're doing and come out here and clean it. Because usually, which I came out here with a blower and kind of blew off some of the stuff out here, but usually it's just a dust pile and dirty and full of uh, cobwebs. One of the things I do love about this though is the ceiling. I love the vaulted ceiling. I mean, it's good and bad because if you look close, you can see all of the cobwebs up there, which how the heck do you get those cleaned other than like tying a towel to the end of your pull pruner and extending it up so that you can like swab the ceiling of all the cobwebs. That's always been a little bit of a, of a hard one to manage, but I do love the look of a vaulted ceiling. And I thought if we do keep this, it would be really cool to wire a chandelier up there and drop it down. That would be really pretty. And all of that said, and most of you guys who have been watching our videos for a while know my thoughts and feelings on the gazebo and how it has fit into our lives and kind of not fit into our lives in a way. I haven't really been super inspired to landscape around it. I've been using existing flower bed lines. Um, I haven't really been able to wrap my brain creatively around making this structure work. So that kind of leads to us to what we're gonna do with the gazebo. So Aaron recently contacted the city manager and asked if we could donate this gazebo to our city, which I think is gonna be so perfect. And he was so ecstatically excited because this specific style fits in really well with some existing structures that are in our parks currently. And there's a small park downtown, which I think we'll run down there and show you what that park looks like, where they have a gazebo sketched into the plan, like future plan of the park but they haven't had the means to do it yet. And so he just thought, this is perfect. We can come and get your gazebo. It can go in that park. 
And that way, this gazebo can live on and probably be used way more heavily than we will have ever used it. Um, I mean, I can imagine there being, you could probably fit three or four tables in here. Um, you could have, you know, little kids' birthday parties, um, just a nice shady spot for people to sit. The park where it's going, they do a Saturday market every Saturday um, from like early spring until a frost. And it's really like, it's a, it's a thing. Like people really love to go to the Saturday market. And so I think it'll be fun for them to have a space for people to sit because there's no designated area right now. And we may even go down there and maybe do some hanging baskets or containers or kind of landscape around it for them. It'd be kind of fun to still like work around it while it's not on our property. <laughs> and honestly, it's kind of a win-win for us anyway because the city has the equipment and the manpower to move this structure, which Aaron and I have not the first clue on how to do that or who to hire to do something like that. Um, so the city benefits, our community benefits, we benefit, and that makes way for what's coming next. So you might be thinking like, what are you gonna do with this space? Because once you remove that gazebo, there's going to be a giant hole. Well, we are putting in a glass greenhouse, a Hartley Botanic Victorian Grand Lodge glass greenhouse. And I would be jumping up and down if I wasn't 10 days or less away from giving birth <laughs> to our baby girl, because I am so excited. It's like this surreal dream I never thought would happen. Erin and I went to England with my parents in 2015. We went to a nursery called Beetham Nurseries. And in the back part of their garden center, there was this beautiful greenhouse. My mom and I were immediately drawn to it. We went and stood inside of it, and that is the exact model, the exact greenhouse that we're gonna be putting in right here. So like I said, it's called the Victorian Grand Lodge. And in terms of footprint, it will be a tiny bit bigger, like take up a little bit more floor space than the gazebo does. But the roof, I think it only, it only goes 13 feet high, which is significant. And I'm not sure how high that roof is, but it will be a little bit lower looking. It won't be quite as tall as the gazebo but I think it's gonna fit in just perfect. It's gonna like just nest in like a glove. We do have a lot of work ahead of us though to get this project done. Um, I kind of thought we were gonna have a year off. <laughs> I should, like we never have a year off from big projects it seems like, but I thought we would have a year off from at least trenching everywhere on our property, but we're not going to because we have to trench from the other side of our house, uh, water, uh, electric, gas, what else? There was something else. Internet. Internet. Um, so we're going to have some trenching going on this spring, which I don't even, I don't even care. Like <laughs> we'll do what we got to do to get this thing going. Um, once the city comes to get the gazebo, we'll be left with a concrete pad, which we will have broken up the whole area excavated. Um, we're going to be moving plants, probably giving some plants away uh, just to make the area clear so that it's very easy for everybody to work in. And honestly, I'm not really emotionally attached to any of the plants around it because like I said I haven't really spent a lot of time or effort putting stuff in uh, so it should be a really interesting process and we want to capture the whole thing uh, we want to be able to show you when the structure is being moved when the area is being excavated when the base layers are being poured um, all of it when the greenhouse is being constructed because this is a huge deal to me so I'm guessing that a lot of you guys know what a Hartley Botanic greenhouse is already even if you don't know it by its brand you've probably seen a picture of the style of greenhouse that we're putting in and they have like we're putting in a, a quite a large one in my mind I think it's a really beautiful greenhouse they do have bigger ones and they have much smaller ones too that kind of fit different budgets and spaces and stuff um, they're still luxury they're still a commitment in fact they sent out or flew out two of their representatives like three years ago to our property and they just scouted around and just to see if there was an opportunity for us to put one in like a good spot for one how could we partner together to do this and uh, back then like it was good it was a good informational visit but it's taken us three years from that point to be able to commit because we still have even though we're getting a really great discount partnering with Hartley to do this we still have a lot of skin in the game um, so it was definitely something we had to think about and prepare for. So this is by no means a free greenhouse for Laura. In fact, um, we have you know a list of projects that we always wanna do. And I think I've mentioned that we wanted to do a wraparound porch around our house, maybe a structure in the back of the cut flower garden. And those aren't gonna happen for a year or two now because given this opportunity, I just thought I have to jump on this. I can't even believe I'm even given this opportunity. So huge thank you to Hartley Botanic for you know kind of making this happen for us in a way. Um, but I think it's going to be a super fun thing to share with you guys, um, just to show you the whole process. And this means that we probably will never move <laughs> from this house. I mean, we were kind of considering 
um, a move possibly to more space because we do have homes all the way around us even though we love all of our neighbors we just thought oh it might be nice to have like some pasture area and stuff but the more stuff like this we do the more i'm like no i think I like it here and <laughs> I don't think we'll ever leave. Um, another thing that we may be doing and I wanted to prep you for is we may be removing some evergreen trees. And they probably look pretty good right now because it's overcast, most everything does. But every time our arborist is here, he goes, when are we taking out those pine trees? Because they're full of blight. And when you get blight in a pine, you cannot reverse the damage, you can stop it. Or like, uh, what's the word, like kind of keep it down, but you can't cure it. And so it just kind of slowly is spreading through those pine trees. And right now they look okay just because we recently had a ton of rain that knocked a bunch of the dead out. Um, but it's just a constant cycle of dead pine needles all the time and like this kind of purpley brown cast on the needles. And he's just been bugging us for ever since <laughs> the very beginning, like we need to take those pines out, which it might be a good opportunity just to kind of excavate the whole area and then do something really pretty. Because when you're putting in a greenhouse like this like you want the whole area to be cohesive and to be all part of the same design instead of limping by something that you know eventually you're going to have to take out anyway so it's a we're considering it we're not sure yet but that might be on the docket so wrap your brains around that <laughs> be prepared and honestly if we're here in 20 to 30 years which is a very high possibility whatever we plant in the pines place and around the whole greenhouse will be mature and wonderful and beautiful and it will be nice to have something in there that doesn't have that has been cared for not neglected cared for properly that doesn't have disease not that it can't strike you know but I don't know I think we have a better uh, chance of having something in there if we choose it uh, something that's resistant to you know something like the blight that we have so all of that said, I'm just so excited. I think it's gonna be a phenomenal year and I'm not about keeping, I mean, you guys who know me know that I'm not about keeping something that doesn't inspire me, that doesn't make me want to be out in my garden, that doesn't make me feel creative or, or any of those things. I want beautiful things in my garden and if you have something that you don't like, get rid of it. Put something that you love there because that's gonna make you love your home and your space so much better and I feel like that's gonna do it. For me right here and it's a total bonus to be in a position to be able to donate the gazebo to the, our city and our community um, so speaking of which i think we should get in the truck and run down there and show you the park so this is the park right here it's a quarter of a city block and there's not a whole lot going on as you can see there are a couple of tables a couple of benches along one of the buildings there a few trees and i'm not even sure where exactly they want to put the gazebo i don't even think it will matter in this space but i think it will add tremendous value to this this space just because there's no there's no structure and there's very little shade so I'm guessing this is the main street of town here uh, I'm guessing they're going to probably want to site it somewhere up close to that but I'm not even sure so um, we'll probably show you when we film them coming to get the structure we'll come down here and show you guys how they set it down and all of that business as well so Anyway, I was just super excited to share everything with you guys, all the news of that new project for this year. Um, and we'll just have a lot to share with you as it progresses and as we get started. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.